Hey everyone, how's it going? In today's quick tip, we're going to be looking at creating and using word balloons inside of Blender. Now, the scene that I've got is just a mocked up scene with a Susan monkey head, a plane, and this object that I whipped up in about five minutes, and I'm gonna show you how to easily do it for yourselves. All it really is, is a curve object with some text on top, uh, and it's got an an object constraint set to the camera as well as being parented to the camera. And the advantage of this is if I was to rotate that camera, you can see how not only does the word balloon follow it, but if I was to move this balloon anywhere in the scene, it will always stay facing the camera. Okay, so if I was to go down or up or anything like that, it remains focused on that plane. Okay. Um, which comes in really handy when you need to make it look like word balloons are over a scene. So why don't I create a new collection or group or layer if you're in 2.79 and show you how all of this is done. So I'm going to start by right clicking on my scene and going new collection. I'm going to call this word balloon 2 in my case. The camera is on the outside of the scene collection. And so now it, with that selected, everything I create from now on should automatically go into that collection. But we'll keep an eye on this uh, little um, outliner tab uh, as we go. So the first thing of course we need is a balloon. I really like to use curve objects because if you come from an Illustrator or Photoshop background, you know how Bezier handles work and you know how vector objects work. And inside of Blender, uh, curves are pretty much that. So let's go Shift A and bring in a Bezier circle. Now, uh, I am in look development mode and even if I was in solid or rendered mode, you'll notice that the circle has no faces. So we need, first of all, to, have, uh, to, to give it a face. And so in the properties tab for that curve, I'm gonna scroll to the top here. I'm gonna make it a 2D shape to begin with. And the fill mode I'm going to set to both. And all of a sudden, it is filled in. Uh, I also wanna give it a material. So I'm going to go to my materials tab and one that I've pre-made is this white material. Now, if we were to take a look at it in our material settings, all I've done is created an RGB color, run it through an emission shader for those of you following along in 2.79. If you're in 2.8, you don't need this. You can go straight from color to material output. It's not a problem, but I'm just gonna leave it there um, to try to be as universal as possible in this tutorial. Um, and that's about it. Now, all we need to do is edit that curve. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm gonna select this point, shift select this point, And now in 2.8, I can right click in between that to bring my curve contextual menu up. I'm gonna hit subdivide. And here on my little subdivide sub menu, I'm going to change that number of cuts to three. I'm gonna select this middle one and I'm gonna shift select the outside points of each of these Bezier handles, these two outside Bezier handles. So you can see that these two dots remain black. The center one is always the dot which is the handle and the outside ones are your Beziers that you can uh, change the tangent on. So I'm gonna select that center one again, shift select the outside Bezier, shift select that outside Bezier. I'm gonna hit the V key to bring up my set handle type and set those to vector because what I wanna do is create a tail for this balloon. So I'm gonna grab that center one, okay? And you can see that if I grab that out, it begins to form this lovely triangle. And now I can begin to change those uh, points around and you'll notice that these ones where the tail sort of intersects have that nice little um, uh, broken tangent, which is what we want. And then I can grab these points and I can fashion a really nice balloon tail. We've created a, our first balloon. Uh, so next, of course, what we need is a little bit of text. Out of edit mode, I'm gonna go Shift A, and I'm gonna bring in a text object. Okay, there it is. Uh, I'm going to tab into edit mode, and I'm gonna type adding text in Blender. Okay. Now it goes into the default text and uh, for ad an added uh, disadvantage is that because it's both on the plane of the balloon, these intersecting meshes are going to you know, fight for dominance when you go to render. So what we wanna do is just move that text slightly above the balloon. So I'm gonna go into front view 
And with the text selected, I'm gonna hit my G key, and I'm just gonna ever so slightly nudge that up, so now that it's sitting above the balloon. And we can, of course, go ahead and center that into the balloon if we wanted to, but what I'm gonna do is change some of the parameters of the text, and that begins with changing it to uh, alignment under paragraph to center. Okay, so we bring that in there. I'm gonna also give this a material that I pre-created, which is a black version of that previous white material so that we can see it. And finally, I'm going to actually give it a comic style font. You don't wanna use this default font, it looks awful, especially for comics. So under font, okay, we see that we've got a few uh, things that we can actually add uh, font to, regular, bold, Italian, italic, bold, italic. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click that folder that says load a font from a file. Now, depending on whether you're on a Windows, Mac, uh, Linux system, navigate to your fonts folder and you'll see them show up in a list. But if you actually wanna see the font faces, you can change your display mode uh, from short list to thumbnails. And this will show you what the fonts actually look like. Now I've downloaded a bunch of comic fonts and one that I can highly recommend is from um, blambot.com. It is royalty free and it's called Back Issues. And I've got a regular version, italic and a bold italic. And so they're the ones that I'm going to load. Let's start with reg. And uh, under bold and italic, I'm going to click on the folder, select the bold italic and just in case I need it, just the plain italic, and now I've got those loaded. Now, the regular is what is showing up here because underneath the font, you see that we've got these selections, bold, italic, underline, small caps, right? Now, by just clicking bold or bold italic, nothing actually changes. What you need to be doing is typing when those things are active. So I'm gonna go into edit, and I'm going to go up to text, delete the word text, click bold and italic, and now type, okay? And now you can see that that text has been typed out in bold italic, okay? And that nice variation is, is something that I always loved in comics. It really sort of emphasizes words. Um, and so that inside the balloon is working quite well, and then you can sort of, uh, you know, massage the vertices of that balloon to look a little bit better. But what about those butted off circles? How do we do that? Well, the natural inclination would obviously be to go into edit mode, shift A and add another circle. But you can see that when you do, you get these horrible uh, intersecting Boolean operations which don't look good at all. So I'm gonna delete that circle and I'm going to basically bud off a balloon the way that I did the tail. And this is much, much easier to do. So let's say we want one that comes out of this side. Let's move those vertices around so that we'll have this thing budding off over here. And I'm gonna shift select these two points, right click, subdivide. And then I'm going to just shift select these two outside handles and make them vectors so that when I bring this out, Okay, I can bring these in and with this broken tangent, I can fix that balloon to look really nice. Okay, and if I wanted to, I can shift select those two and get another handle on here just for some added control. Okay, um, and uh, that's a much easier thing to do. Now you'll notice that eventually, if you've got two points and a lot of distance between, you start to get these jagged edges. The way you get rid of that is to, in your uh, object data for your curve, is to up the resolution preview. So let's uh, bring that up to 24 or maybe even 36 if we're feeling daring that our machines can handle <laughs> such resolution. Okay, and then all we, all we can do is duplicate that text and edit it. isn't hard to do, okay? Even scale it down for a little variation. And then we can do another one. Uh, so let's subdivide here, and then we're gonna subdivide again over here. 
Shift select those two handles, vector them. This time, let's bring this around here. Oh, we want that to actually be an aligned, okay. And again, we'll just duplicate that at all. Oh, let's bold italic this all and exclamation mark. And for good measure, why don't we actually make the size a little bit bigger. Okay, and there we have it. We've got these two butted balloons off of this curve object. Now, what about that outline? How do we do that? Okay, there isn't really kind of like an outlining method. So what you really have to do is duplicate this curve. But before I do that, remember when we were doing the fill mode and that was set to none. This means that we just have this outline. That's great, but how do we get a little bit of thickness? Well, if we go down to our bevel depth, you can see that you can add a little thickness. We'll obviously need to separate these a little bit, okay? And this creates a really nice outline. So let's just uh, reverse what we just did. So we've got this and we're going to duplicate it, Shift D, leave it in place and fill mode, none, bevel. Let's bevel this and you see that it sort of bevels out a little bit and let's change the material to its black one and all of a sudden we've got this wonderful outline, okay? Now, if you're in 2.79, obviously you have to edit these curves separately if you wanna edit them at all. But in 2.8, you can shift select two objects, tab into edit mode and shift select points of two different objects and edit them at the same time. See, if I was to select just one object, you can see how that can really break it, but shift select the same point and you know, we're off to the races. And so this is a very quick way of editing and fixing that, that curve really, really simply. All right, so now that we've got this word balloon and it's looking very nice and uh, I'm very happy with it, you don't really want to, you know, pair in a bunch of stuff and then just have to rotate this to the orientation of the camera all the time. And one very important thing is that if I you know, bring in my side menu here, you'll notice that by working in top view for curves, our rotations are zeroed out, which makes uh, doing alignments and stuff like that really, really easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that outline, shift select the text, and then shift select the inside fill. And I'm going to go control P so that everything is parented to that um, central object, which is, this is what I'm going to uh, put my constraint on. So with object constraints, let's go over here. Um, I'm going to add a copy rotation but first I, would, I do wanna see my camera in my view because I don't wanna go searching for names. What I wanna do is go copy rotation and then with the target eyedropper tool, click on camera. And all of a sudden our object is now oriented to the camera. So every time I move it or scale it, it will always face the camera. But there is one disadvantage and that is while the camera, when it rotates, will, it will copy that rotation it won't follow the camera. And so what we have to do is also parent that object. So select that, um, that central object and then shift select the camera, control P, object. And now we have got a camera, which when it rotates, the uh, word balloons follow along and they will always be oriented towards that camera if we move those separately. You can then put yourself, uh, give yourself a scene and, uh, and, and put those anywhere you want. So if you've got characters behind, say for instance, okay, uh, you can have word balloons that uh, show up anywhere else. Now, I'm not gonna address this shadow. I know it could probably be an issue later on down the track, but that's another hurdle to jump. Um, but now you've got a word balloon that fits inside of your scene. You can put it wherever you need in, in relation to the camera. And, uh, and you can start to render comics directly out 
of Blender um, entirely. And that's my quick tip for today. Hope you got a lot out of that. The demo file is available in a link underneath the video, so you can go ahead and click on that and download this and take a look at it and dissect it. Um, uh, I don't think the font is uh, loaded, so you're gonna have to find your own font, but I'll also have a link in the accompanying Patreon post to show you where you can get that particular font. All right, guys, so thanks for watching. Bye for now.